Hi, and welcome to Talking Horses. On this show, we'll be discussing many horse topics, herd dynamics, riding, grooming, groundwork, body language, and most importantly, safety. You can be sure that if it has to do with horses, we'll be talking about it. Our focus will be on natural horsemanship, the language and communication that's natural for the horse. We're gonna have loads of fun playing with and developing a great relationship with one of the most magnificent creatures on the face of the earth, the horse. Hi everyone, welcome to Talking Horses. I'm Eileen Shanahan. Today we're coming to you from Islip Terrace, Long Island, New York. And joining us today is natural horseman Tony Simonetti. Tony, welcome to, back to the show. Thank you, appreciate it. Good to have you. Winter is approaching us. You know, it gets cold here on Long Island, and if you don't have an indoor arena, there's not much you can do with your horses. At least I don't think you can. I usually take the winter off. Do you have any suggestions for us? Yeah, oh yes, we definitely have suggestions for that. Um, See, in a perfect scenario, uh, we have plenty of room to safely work with our horses. And you need movement in order to train horses. But the good news about that is you don't need big movement to keep the brain in tune. Okay, so what we do, on a normal situation, we're outside, we you know, play games with our horses to enhance the relationship. Uh, we'll put them through the car wash, we'll put them over the tarps, we'll ask them to go sideways and basically create a very advanced yes pattern. This yes pattern is responsible for keeping you connected and effectively communicating with your horse when you're riding and doing everything else you do with your horses. So when conditions are less than favorable and we have ice and snow, like last year I think we had 30 something days where my entire place was an ice skating ring and we couldn't even let our horses out. But we wanted to keep them plugged in. I don't think they make ice skates, but you know, no, not horses. not not yet. Anyway, you know, someone will come up with it. But uh, so what we do is we go inside the barn, and we have a simple, very simple, very low movement exercises that keep the horse's brain engaged with you, and keep them connected, and like I said, communicating in a way that still enhances the relationship. And, and, and helps the horse through that time where he's pent up and just hanging out in the barn. So you don't necessarily need a whole arena to work with your horse. You can do some exercises right here in yeah, the stall. Absolutely, and absolutely. Right. And it's simple stuff. It's simple and it doesn't look like much, but it affects the brain in a big way. Okay, why don't you show us a few. Okay, let's go. So basically all I'm really going to do now is it's, it's the smaller movements, but it's still c continuing with the yes pattern. So what I, a small movement might be, will you drop your head for me? Okay, and every time he says yes, you release the pressure, and just rub them down and let them know that that's all you want. Again, we're working on the brain itself. We're not working on training the body as much as we are the brain. Okay, so little things mean a lot right now. Okay, now something to this effect. Will you softly flex and remain soft right there for a moment or so? As soon as he says yes to that, we drop it and let them know that's all we wanted. Okay, little things like that. All right, on both sides. Now remember that you have a right side horse and you have a left side horse. So you want to make sure that you do this with both sides. Okay, you want to get that conformity and that yes pattern on both sides. Okay, and these are little things, but they mean a lot. Okay, and then you just rub them down, and by doing this, you're you're once again, staying plugged in, communicating, and working with enhancing the whole relationship. Okay? Stuff like that. Now, then we start to move the body a little bit. Okay? Once we know he's okay with that, and again, always keep your safety in mind, so have, a, have an exit just in the event something spooks your horse. Um, and you're in a confined area, have a place where you can go. So something simple like this, will you move your feet over slightly? And just ask him to slide over just a little bit. And then when he does, rub him down. Make him feel like a rock star for saying yes. Okay, and remember, these are small movements that you want. You don't want to make big, fast movements because that's how things can get a little bit ugly in a confined area. So you want small movements. One step, maybe one and a half steps, and then just let them know that's all you wanted. Okay, little things. Okay, 
The next area might be the hind end. So I might walk over to the hind end and just ask it to slide over a half a step. There, and release. And then rub it down. Let them know that's all you want. Rub them down, okay? Come to this side, take your hand, slightly just ask, will you move your hind end the other way? There you go. And then rub that area and let them know that's all you wanted. 50, you'd be surprised how 15 or 20 minutes of this on a daily basis will keep you connected. And um, once again, uh, when you do get bigger area to work with, you won't have such a uh, lack of communication. You'll have much less of a lack of communication because you kept it on a daily basis. Okay, um, now, how about come forward? Okay, so wherever you might be, again, have a, put yourself in a safe zone, ask them to step forward. Okay, then we'll stop them and ask them to step back. Ask them to step back. Okay, just like that. Okay, and again, if the better you are prior to putting them away for the winter or having confined, confinement issues, the easier all this will be. Okay, maybe I'll do an entire sideways, front and back, together. Thank you very much. Okay, rub them down. Will you please move your body sideways? Front and back. Thank you very much. Rub them down like that. Okay, um, let's see. Another thing that I like to do is I like to ask him to relax his body. Sometimes doing things like this. You know, working with the tail a little bit in a safe zone. Once again, be in a safe area. And asking him to relax his hind end at the same time that he gives you flexion. Okay, this shows you that he's kind of relaxed with you. Things like this. Okay, rub him down. Let him know that's all you want. All right, uh, the next couple of things that I would do would be with regard to his emotional status. So I may take something like this, but again, always keep yourself within the parameters of safety. Don't bring something big in if your horse can't handle a gum wrapper. Okay, you see what I mean? So you want to gauge it where you're going to have success. Set yourself up for success in everything that we're talking about here. Okay, and I might just do this. Okay, and just ask him to deal with it. And you can drop his head while you're doing that. And let him know that's all you want. Okay, and these little things build on the relationship the entire time. Okay, so here again. Good boy, good boy. Now if you do this every single day or three times a week, you'll see that when you finally do get the good weather and you get outside, your horse will definitely behave much better than if he did nothing for the entire 30 days or however long it is that you don't have the ability to get outside. Okay, now I would go into the aisle way. So we'll move everything over to there because there's a couple of things that I would do out in a different area um, if I was confined to the barn.